Hello guys, so welcome back to our lecture 11. So uh, in this lecture, we're gonna explore a new chapter of the book, Manu's book, which is chapter four, combinational logic. So all the chapters before that we discussed in the previous month was basically our foundation for the, uh, these two chapters or these two topics, basically. It's a combinational logic and a sequential logic. Just to be uh, sure that Everything that we discussed so far in our analysis, I mean, Boolean algebra, K maps, and so on, and all the function examples that we see is basically combinational circuits or combinational logic. And now it's the time to define uh, formally what is combinational circuit or what is combinational logic. So, combinational logic is basically a logic, a function that uh, uh, just a function of the inputs, okay? So for example, here, the outputs, every bit of the output is only a function of any bit in the input or all the bits maybe, or some of them, okay? Sequential logic, the other type of logic, uh, we'll see something different. We'll see that the output is function of the input and also function of its previous state or its previous value. So, uh, when we calculate the new output, we take two considerations, the current output and the input, okay? So that's basically the difference. So basically the sequential has some, a kind of memory we can say, but this is uh, in, in combination logic here in this unit or this chapter, it has no uh, memory, okay? So let's see example. Actually, we, we as I said, we talked about this before but without giving its name or, you know, combinational logic. So let's design something like uh, an encoder and the encoder means something to convert code to another code, okay? So this encoder will convert BCD code to what is called XS3 code. I'm gonna explain what is XS3 XS code now, okay? So basically what is BCD? BCD is, uh, is a binary code decimal in which we uh, we represent binary numbers into uh, what's called BCD code, okay? So in, uh, in BCD, we use only the binary coded uh, or binary in, uh, codes from zero to nine. Otherwise, we use the same BCD, the same uh, binary codes from zero to nine to represent other codes. For example, if I wanna represent a zero, I'm gonna write zero, 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 one, zero. If I wanna represent one, it would be zero, 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 one, until I reach nine here, which is one, zero, zero, one. Okay, that's fine. So far, BCD and the binary are the same. But how about 10? If I wanna represent 10, for example. So 10 in binary would be all also four bits, something like this. This is in binary. But then in BCD, it would be represented using uh, the codes here, these BCD codes. So it is one, remember it is one, zero. So I will represent the one using its BCD, which is zero, 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 one. Then it represents the zero with its code, which is uh, four zeros. So this is 10 in BCD. 10 in BCD is eight bits, okay? One is zero, 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 one, then we represent the zero with four zeros. Although it's in binary, you know, it is just four bits. That's basically the BCD, okay? Now, what is accessory? Accessory is basically the number added uh, with, uh, and add to it three. So for example, if I have any number N, and I want to represent it, and it's binary now, and I want to represent it or encode it uh, in accessory, I'll just add three to that number, n. So n plus three is basically n, but in accessory encoding. So for example, here are the numbers that you want to represent. Okay, because the, the question or the example is, or the design is, is to, or the object of the sign is to convert BCD code to accessory code. So you will have one of these inputs. 
one of these 10 inputs from zero to nine. Okay. So whenever you reach, you receive a code of uh, one of these codes, you want to re represent it in a, an accessory code. So basically add three to each one. So if we add three to the zero here, it will be three, right? Zero, zero, one, one, this is three basically. If we added three to the one, it will be four, this is four. If we add three to the two, it will be five. This is five and so on. If we add three to the uh, nine, it will be 12. This is 12. Okay, that's basically accessory. So what is the reason behind this accessory? What is its importance? Okay, so basically it makes the subtraction easier. Actually, you don't need to make subtraction. Uh, so whenever you wanna subtract nine from, uh, from one of these accessory codes, you just need to complement. Okay, and you will get the result. For example, so this one is the code of the five. And this one is the code of the four. Okay, so this is basically four, but it's represented with accessory. And this is five represented by accessory. Again, this is not the actual five. Actual five that we write in binary is uh, uh, zero, one, zero, one. But this is we add three to it. So it, it, lo it looks like eight, okay? Although it's represented, fi represented five in accessory coding, okay? So we know that nine minus four is five. Okay, this is nine, this is five. And look at this, this is four, right? So what is the relation between that one and that one? That code and that, that, in co that code. So basically this is the complement of this. If we complemented the five, this will be zero. This will be one, this will be one, this will be one. So you don't need to make the subtraction basically. So you can save some circuit. Okay, that's the importance of accessory coding. Okay, now we uh, wrote the truth table. This is basically the first step. And why this first step is, is important to know how many bits in the input and how many bits in the output. This is very important. So you know now that you will have a box like this. We have we'll, we'll have four inputs A B C D and four outputs. Let's call them W X Y Z. Okay, and you must do the truth table. The first step in the first uh, important importance of this is truth table. You will know that how many outputs you have, because this accessory is basically a number plus three, but this may maybe exceed four bits. So that's why we need uh, the truth table. Another importance for this truth table is the second step, basically, which is uh, finding the minimized logic for it. Now your, 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 uh, your circuit has four outputs. So you need to find the expression for each one of them and minimize the expression because if the expression is not minimized, you will have more gates, okay? So you will, you, uh, here you have four outputs, four Boolean functions, okay? So you will have four kernel of maps like this, four. For each output, you have uh, a kernel map, okay? Uh, w, this is an output, X, Y, and Z. So let's do one of them as an example, then you have the example in the book, solved in the book. So let's do, for example, the Z, okay? So let's, uh, here is the Z. So let's write it. So we have one, Zero, then one, zero, uh, one, zero, one, zero, then one, zero. Remember the flow of the kernel map. This is very important, okay? Now you notice something. This truth table has only 10 uh, entries. Although we have four inputs. These four inputs mean 16 different combinations. That's good, but remember this is a BCD. So BCD is only from zero to uh, representing numbers from zero to nine, okay? So you will have six uh, cases uh, or six combinations that will not happen at all, okay? So uh, these six MBT cells here uh, represent some combinations in the inputs that will not happen. 
since they will not happen, then we put anything uh, here in these free cells, we put don't cares. And since we both don't cares, we can now use such, uh, you know, such don't cares, putting them zeros or ones to uh, to facilitate our design. Okay, so let's do that. So basically, if we look at this one here, we have five ones: this guy and this guy, this guy, this guy, and also this guy. Okay. So if we didn't consider the don't care, the best thing to do here is to do something like this, a group like this, that will take or combine four ones, then you will have one left. So take this guy with that guy in the, in the top. Okay. This will be, this will be, you know, if you, do, if you didn't consider the don't care. Also, if you consider the don't care now, remember this side, and this side is for is a kind of is foldable, and these two sides on the you know left and right side are are, are, are adjacent. So if you consider this don't get as one, and this don't get as one, this is also one, then you can do that. You can have this very big group here with eight ones. Okay. Then if you do that, then Z will be equal to, so the A is changing, C is changing, basically only the bar is not a changing. That's a lot of saving. That's maybe 50% saving for Z, because if you didn't consider the don't cares, you will have two terms, two term, each one is sum of product. So uh, you will have three, three, two AND gates and one OR gate. Now you don't have gates basically, you just need inverter. And we always usually, we usually or always consider the inverter nothing. Okay. Okay. So uh, you will do that for, for the rest of, uh, for the rest, uh, rest of them. I mean, you will do the same for uh, uh, W, X, and Y. And here's a solution for each one of them. Okay. And the don't take cares here are, are really useful. Now may, someone may ask a question, how about the other don't cares? Since you didn't consider them, then they just, you, once you didn't consider them, then you basically say implicitly that they are zero. So basically here are the zero, a zero, and a zero. Whenever you consider a don't care as one, then it's one. Uh, after making the combinations, you know, and finding the optimal, any don't care that is not belonging to any group, that means uh, it's a zero, basically. Okay, good. So here are the four Boolean functions, minimize it basically. Then the last step is the implementation. So uh, let's implement that. So let's for, to, take for example the Z. So Z is equal to D bar. So here is the input D. We complement it, then this will be uh, Z. How about Y? Y is C D plus C bar D bar. Okay. You can of course do something like this. So here is C and D. You can just and them. Then uh, complement the D, complement also the C. Then have another gate here. Then or them, this will give you y. Okay. But you will notice that we need also C bar D bar in another, you know, uh, in another term is here, especially the X term. Okay. So uh, you can do the following. You can do that, you can or them, I mean C plus D. Okay. Then you complement that output. This will give you C plus D totally bar. This is by D Morgans. This will be C bar dot D bar. Okay. But of course you can do this also. This is just a variety. Okay. So uh, this is basically, you know, uh, the implementation. It's really a straightforward approach. 
okay? And you know, you can, for, for example, simulate this using VHDL to be more sure about your outputs for any combination in the inputs, and this will be basically your homework. So your homework for that, uh, you know, lesson here is to implement such circuit into VHDL, and of course, simulate it at all these inputs. Okay, guys. So that's basically uh, our first lesson on uh, or our first recording in uh, chapter four and uh, lecture 11. So thank you very much for watching this and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.